Hey everybody, welcome to Tom Girl, where we talk all things sports, entertainment, fashion, and adventure. Tonight, we have one of the world's top fashion models. She's been on the cover of Elle, Vogue, GQ, and others. And not only that, she is also a host, actor, producer, and woman after my own heart, dog lover. Stay tuned for Minnie Anden. You're tuned in to AfterBuzz TV, the ESPN of TV talk. Now, let the buzz Welcome back, everybody, to another Tom Girl Tuesday. I'm your host, JJ Jurgens, and Minnie, welcome. Thanks Thank for joining. You. Thanks for having me. <laughs> I'm so excited. Like I was telling you before the interview, it was just so fun looking at all your photos and the portfolio of your career because it's just yeah, spectacular. It's a long one. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's begin starting. You said it's a long one. Let's start back with the, yeah. the early days, maybe even before you got into modeling. So, yeah, I mean, I never really you know, thought of modeling or anything. It, it just kind of, uh, I had a, a teacher in school and her daughter worked at an ad agency and she asked my teacher if there was any kids in her class that she thought could, oh, that was weird. <laughs> that, <laughs> we can hear, we can hear you. <laughs> um, that had any kids that, you know, could do some fashion shows and whatever. And she thought of me, so I ended up doing it, um, mm -hmm. which was when I was like 10 years old. Hey, so, okay, sorry guys, real quick, Jonathan, we can hear, yeah, thank you, and just so you know, I lost my monitor again, but we're rolling with it today? Yeah, we're going with it. <laughs> okay. It's, it's, okay. It's how it goes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Okay, so back to, so, so she got you into it. So. Yeah, yeah, so I, I started doing it as a 10-year-old, and back in Sweden, which is, I think, quite different from if you do it here in America. Mm -hmm. Um, it was just, you know, quite, quite simple and, and um, you know, no hair, no makeup, nothing like that. But so I got into to doing some some jobs here and there. And then by the time I was 13, 14, um, I was with an agency who had been booking me all these uh, kids jobs. And then they saw that, oh, this this girl's actually growing. She's actually tall and skinny and mm -hmm. um, maybe she can actually, you know, continue modeling. So so that's kind of how it, how it continued. And then. I would go and, and model uh, in the summers or I would take time off from school if I booked a job and basically it was, it was just if you kept, you know, if I kept my grades up, then my mom would let me go and, and, and work. Mm -hmm. So um, it was a good balance. Was it at the time too you were um, going to be, you loved ice skating. We have some early pictures of yeah. you ice skating. Was that yeah. something you had to <laughs> give up so, to make a choice? No, or so my, my sister actually was the one who, who started skating and then because I'm the younger sister I was always by the rink, you know, hanging out. So then my mom just ended up putting me on the ice so that's kind of how that happened. And, um, you know, being tall and skinny, great for modeling, not so great for, for figure <laughs> skating. But um, I, I did it for, uh, till I, until I was like 16 or 17, five times a week. And, um, and I would compete during the weekends. And in the summer times, I would go and do like a month of figure skating camp. And then I would go for two, three weeks to New York or to Paris oh. to model. And so I was kind of busy. Were there any aspects of ice skating that helped you in the modeling? I career? think so because since I'm I'm kind of gangly and you know I, I do have a, a pretty good control of my body, mm -hmm. uh, body movements and 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 stuff like that. So maybe I'm a little bit more graceful mm -hmm. than I would have been otherwise. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of those body movements, like how do you find how do you find like you have a very distinguished you know walk on the runway oh. or how to pose oh. certain ways for shots? Yeah. Um, hmm. Well, I th I'd say this. If you're on a shoot and you're doing um, really high fashion and you're wearing these amazing designers, the, the, the clothes kind of speak for themselves and they kind of just, you just kind of lean into it and, and, and you don't have to do that much if you're wearing something amazing. Mm -hmm. um, it's when you have to model stuff that might be a little more boring, less interesting, that's when you really kind of have to bring it out mm -hmm. and, and, and give it life. How are ways that you do that? Um, I just, I, you know, you, I'm so comfortable with it now, uh, uh, but I, I remember in the beginning of my career, like how, how it just felt so, you felt so silly, like 
moving around and, and like fake moving and, 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 you know, fake turning or doing whatever it is that they wanted you to do. But, you know, I, now I'm just kind of, it's autopilot and I do it and, and you just realize like if you, they need one shot. So there's going to be like 200 that might look crazy because you're in movement, but then there's just one that's needed. Mm -hmm. So you just have to kind of keep going and, and just trust that they're going to catch the moment, mm -hmm. basically. Yeah, yeah. There's one gem in the midst of all yeah, of those. Yeah, that you need. exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when you tell me about making the decision when you were like, okay, yes, you know, I want to do this, I'm gonna move to New York. What kind of yeah. thoughts were going through your mind? So I was always really serious about my my education. So when I was nineteen I finished uh I guess it's the Swedish version of high school, I guess, like before university. And so I thought, okay, I'm going to go and model for two, three years. Uh, and I'm going to earn money to buy an apartment and not, you know, work up any student loans. And I'll go back and I'll go to university. So that was the idea. And I moved to Paris uh, first because it was, it was only a two and a half hour flight from, from Stockholm. So it kind of felt a little bit more comfortable not moving too far away. And, uh, you know, I, I, I have a, a love for Paris, but living there was not really... Uh, it didn't really suit me. Um, so I wasn't really happy with it. And the business there is also different. It's just very kind of, everything is always like the glass is, uh, is half empty. Mm -hmm. It's never like half full, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I got, I was a little over it. And then I thought, okay, well, I'll give it another shot. I'll go to New York. And uh, I moved there and, and pretty much met my husband straight away. Another and model, correct? Another model, yeah. yeah, we met on a job. And New York is just the best. And you know, as a young person living in New York, and I mean, it was just amazing. So then I just, I just kept working, and 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 a career sort of you know really happened there, and I got really busy, and I never went back to school. It just kind of kept rolling. Mm -hmm. So here I am without an education. Uh, I think you're doing <laughs> just fine. years old. <laughs> I think you're just no, doing fine. No, but part of me is like still feels that way. You know, it's like, oh my God, like I, I have this career, but sometimes I, I, I say to my friends, like I feel like I have a, a sort of a pretend job in a way, mm -hmm. you know, because I didn't go through like years and years of studying and it's, it's, it's interesting. And yeah. all of a sudden, because, you know, all of a sudden I'm, I'm 41 and I'm, this is what I'm, this is my, you know, this is mm how -hmm. I make my money and it's great, but it's just, you know, I used to be so serious about, <laughs> about the education. Yeah. yeah. Well, you can always go back and take a class know, or, you know, I or know. just study I things know. that you're yeah, interested it's in. True. It's yeah. true. It's Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we have a few of the, of cov uh, the covers that you've done. Yeah. Um, so we, you've done L, GQ, Glam, Revolt, pretty much Every, everything out there. How was it for you when you started seeing yourself appear on the cover of all these magazines? I, I don't know if I, I mean, I, I always thought it was fun seeing it. And actually, you know, I come from, from the days of actually shooting film. Mm. So it was always like you shot Polaroids and then you shot film and it was kind of a surprise when stories came out. Mm -hmm. um, now you, because it's digital, like you know what the story is going to look like. You get to, you know, you get to see it. And, and uh, so it used to be very exciting and now, of course, I mean, I'm still, you know, it's still fun to see it come out. But normally now you have a, you have an idea of what it's going to be. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it's a little different. How are other ways that the industry has changed over the years? Um, I think uh, it's changed. Uh, we, we talked a little bit about that earlier before we went on air that, uh, you know, I'm still like I'm, I'm 41. I'm still working. And I feel like there's there's still a market for me. And for I feel like people really do want to see identify with the people that are wearing the clothes and if you're a 40 to 60 year old woman you don't want to see a 19 year old mm -hmm. uh, or I mean it's great too but like you might not buy the outfit mm -hmm. I feel like they kind of want to identify and and so I, I and there's a lot of models now that are still like my age they're still working and it, it didn't I don't think it really used to be that way mm -hmm. and I mm -hmm. think people are still like oh my god you still work and I'm like yeah I mean I'm not that you know and it's like <laughs> there's, there's a lot out there mm -hmm. What do you think, and we talked a little bit about this too, that the some of the reasons why you, your career has lasted, right, continued to last? Um, well, I think I, I didn't burn myself out. I always had a family life. And I mean, I could have, I feel like I could have always been a little, I could have pushed myself a little bit harder, but I always wanted to keep that balance. Mm -hmm. So I did say no to a lot at one point when I was at the height of my career. Um, when it came to, because I was like, I can't be, you know, I, 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 I tried to not be gone for more than t two weeks at a time and, and that kind of stuff. So um, I feel like I, I've, I've lasted, you know, mm -hmm. and I never, 
I didn't go down like the the road of, of drugs and hardcore mm-hmm. partying and all that stuff. So I mean, we all dabbled and stuff, but that's a different story, <laughs> yeah, you know? Yeah. So, um, but yeah, I I, uh, I feel like I just kind of, and I've always, I've been blessed with like really nice people around me, a good team mm-hmm. and great clients. And, you know, the people that I work with now, like I have a lot of uh, regular people, uh, regular clients that I work with. I mean, we're all friends and it's, mm-hmm. it's great. You know, mm-hmm. it's like we all have a job to do and we do it, but we also have a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I've always been a, and a big believer in that. Like you need to have fun with what you do mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. yeah so you've also done a lot of been the um face of a lot of different brands mm-hmm. hugo boss little mm-hmm. banana republic all those um any jobs in particular that just really kind of stand out for you or shoots or like really really fun ones <clears throat> yeah i i've i've always loved uh i think maybe it was one of my first like hugo boss it was probably my first hugo boss fragrance i did with ah, that yeah the boss one right there <laughs> it was shot by peter Lindbergh. Um, who is one of my favorite mm-hmm. photographers, who I started with when I was like maybe 16 or 17. And uh, we shot it in Arles in south of France. And uh, it was just a great experience all the way around. And mm-hmm. still like one of my favorite images. Yeah, it was fun. And I actually, the last time I worked with him was actually when I was pregnant. Because mm. we did a little makeup uh, job together. And uh, and because uh, they were only seeing my face. It was okay. I was six months uh-huh. pregnant. And then mm-hmm. he actually um, shot a beautiful nude of me. Oh, so awesome. I have a Peter Lindbergh. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I'm that's nude fantastic. With pregnant. <laughs> my baby. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. That's a great memory. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what um, What is like a typical photo shoot day like? And I'm sure they all change. But yeah. They all, like... they all, they're all different. Like it depends on what kind of job it is. But if it's a more commercial job, like you have, you have an early call time, you get there and you do hair and makeup and, um, you know, it's, yeah, it, it, it is it is different from job to job. It's like mm-hmm. some some jobs are nine to five, some jobs are from super early in the morning to late at night. And for me now at this stage of my career, I feel like I do a little bit more of the lifestyle commercial stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I, I, I don't know. It's it's uh, it's 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 work. It's but it's still. I mean, like I said, like a lot of the times I get to work with people that I know, so we have a banter. Mm-hmm. And we get everything done, but we also have a good time. Mm-hmm. One of the jobs you also worked out was uh, Victoria's Secret, yeah, and their fashion yeah. show, yeah. And I mean, that's that's huge now with now the, the TV is, yeah. show it's, and all that. It's funny, yeah. like now I see, like just as if a girl does like one Victoria's Secret show, she doesn't even really have to have that big of a career in her, you know. Mm-hmm. It's just like, oh my God, she's a, you know, and you're like, wow, okay. And that's because that's what the industry has, you know, mm-hmm. um, what it leans to. But I did a show. I think I did their first like really big show in 2001 I think it was in uh, the south of France during like Cannes Film Festival Mm -hmm. and uh, I mean it was before it was like a this ginormous that's the start of it you know it was such a long time ago and it was amazing yes we did that show and then I did maybe two or three shows after that but I was never a VS model I just Mm -hmm. did their shows because basically whatever girls were doing all the shows like so you go and you do New York and you do Milan and Paris and London in between and and it's kind of that thing of like if a girl is popular to tend to do all the shows and all the designers want her and so whoever mm-hmm. the designers wanted we were kind of a at one point I was a, a girl in, in that group so um, they would just book whatever girls were the the you know the popular show girls basically mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, so I end up doing it even though I'm not like a voluptuous woman you know um, but yeah, it was it was fun. <laughs> well, are there any things that you that surprised you about the industry or your career that you like? Oh, I didn't see that one coming and going in. Or um, no, I've been pretty. I feel like I've I've been pretty um, sheltered from stuff. Maybe mm-hmm. um, it hasn't. I mean, there's been some crazy stuff, sure, with like photo shoot with different photographers who are known to be crazy, and you know. Um, you know, Tara Richardson, for example. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you know who he is, mm-hmm. but yeah, he he is, uh, yeah, he's, 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 he's <laughs> known he, to be crazy. <laughs> yeah. And just, you know, being on jobs with people like that, and you kind of just have to go with the floor, and you're like, oh my God, this is mm-hmm. interesting. But mm-hmm. no, nothing really too crazy. Mm-hmm. What were uh, maybe some things business wise that you learned about um, the modeling industry or your, your own being, you know, kind of the head of your own career? Here? Yeah. I mean, I feel like it's really good uh, training just to be around 
people all the time and people that you do not know. You kind of become fast friends. You learn to kind of socially uh, mingle and handle yourself, which I feel is very important in any job. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And, you know, just to, um, God, business advice. It's like for me. <laughs> 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 no, but, but it's, uh, I mean, it is after all, it is a, it's a career, you know, mm -hmm. and I've always looked at it that way. Mm -hmm. So I mean, maybe you know, yeah, yeah. You yeah. have to kind of you know, it's a job. Like you can't just be like. I think it's different um, nowadays too. But back in the day, it was a little bit too much partying for mm -hmm. from a lot of the people. I think. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. know, were there any mentors or uh, people in your life that made a difference? Mm, yeah, like you know, I had an agent for a very long time that was you know she treated me like family. Mm -hmm. So she was always looking out for me, and like I said, I was always I was always uh, protected. I feel um, always taken care of. Mm -hmm. um, so I never felt because it can be very lonely. You know, you're on the road by yourself, and you're a young girl, and uh, it's it's it can be really difficult. Mm -hmm. That's 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 the challenge, and that has been the challenge for me, and still sometimes is. You know, it's like that. It's just you. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's not always fun. Like, it would be great if you had, like, a travel mate. Yeah. <laughs> that was always with you, you know? Yeah, yeah I'm sure it's like another, you have your yeah. employee, you know, yeah. that you work but with in other like places, a, and then like, you don't yeah. have, yeah. yeah. And you can hire your... an assistant, but hey, then yeah. I'm, like, paying the person to, like, yeah. <laughs> that's not the way I want it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you also made the jump, then, over to film and mm -hmm. TV. So let's mm -hmm. talk about some of those projects a bit, a little yeah. bit. You were in The Mechanic. Yeah. With uh, Jason Strathen. Yeah. Strathen. Yeah. Yeah. How yeah, that was that? no, that was great. Um, I went in and auditioned for it, and it was complete different um, character at that point. And it was actually one of those auditions where I went in and uh, I was meeting the director, and we were in the casting room, and um, I could hear like the phone. It was like the paper thin walls, and I could hear like the office, you know, next door. And so I was distracted and I was going through my scene. I just felt like I was like, oh, this is not going the way I want it to go. And I just felt like I started like sweating and I could like, it felt like they could see sweat running down my face. <laughs> um, anyway, I finished it and I went out and I, I never normally do this because I'm normally always like, I like to keep my sides for, mm -hmm. you know, I don't want to throw them away because that's like a sign of like, it's over. Yeah, you know, yeah, this, yeah. But I was like, I just like, screw this basically this group and like I was, this sucked and I actually I, yeah ended up booking it got it which is funny and then I've had many other auditions where I've walked out of there being like yes this was awesome and it's led nowhere so like it. I've just learned that you just don't know yeah you don't know how was for you transitioning over to acting did you take classes or did you just go with um, it it's something that I've always kind of wanted to do but I was not brave enough to do it I think and then I I had um there was a, a model actually who who had booked a role in a tv show uh, in a pilot many years ago called Beck and Call and she canceled last minute and whoever had booked her I knew him through some people and he thought of me and he called me up and he said hey could you do you think could you step in and do this can you do like an eastern european accent and could mm -hmm. you and I was like all right do I'll do it so I did it and it worked out and it was really fun and then he started just sending me out um, and I became his little, because he was with UTA at the time, so he started sending me out on the side until I started booking stuff, and then I officially joined them uh, for a while and um, and started, you know, going out and booking stuff. And in the beginning, for me, the the, the way in was playing a model, mm -hmm. um, and then that kind of led to, to other stuff, you know, when I, I guess that I could do Should. more, which is like, it's not even, I don't mind playing a model, but it's always so, like, just... Uh, it's like this typical like this is what a model is and you're yeah. like no it's not like I don't care if her profession is being a model but let's have like yeah could she be a person too maybe? that's something I definitely <laughs> wanted to ask you about you know? I feel like a lot of them in or yeah in the shows we see it's like the, the yeah. stereotypical she's maybe not so she's smart this, or she's yeah yeah, yeah yeah totally well one yeah. role where you'd really uh, like I loved was one of my favorite shows was Nip Tuck oh yeah and you did you played so a model <clears throat> but a yeah. model who was tired of being beautiful yeah. and being yeah. judged for her yeah. beauty tell me yeah. about playing that role a bit that was really uh cool actually because I I got to do um prosthetics so I got to have uh, and it, it was like a nine hour process first I had to go and get it like molded to my face mm -hmm. yeah and then I had to um it was a yeah so nine hours to get that done and uh it was really uh it was interesting to see myself that way actually it, it hit me in a different way mm -hmm. than I than I thought and um it was it was a gr I mean I love the show and I also uh love the actors on the show and so it was a really great 
great time for me. I was curious how that hit you because a lot of your dialogue talked about how you were tired of being mm -hmm. this person who just is mm -hmm. judged on her beauty or who mm -hmm. guys like just want to mm -hmm. sleep with or who that you know having so I, yeah. I wondered if there was any sort of emotional well, more, things that more kind like of happened to, like, for you before I got the messed up face, which is also kind of funny that it was only my face that was messed up and like nothing else. <laughs> well, and because she drives a car <laughs> straight into I mean, like my a neck is fine. thing, yeah. right? <laughs> but um, but uh, yeah, I, I first she first shaved her head. And she was like, look at me now. Like, this is when he's like, no, you're still attractive kind of thing, you know. <laughs> and um, and it was funny because I would I'd be walking through the lot and it looked so good. So if you weren't up close to me, like, it looked like I was this bald girl walking around, you mm -hmm, know. Mm -hmm. And it's just the people look. It's just a different thing. And, like, imagine walking around looking like that. And, and the the attention that you would get mm -hmm. from other people. That's the interesting part, too. You know, it's it's just, uh, yeah, it's, it's, that was, I mean, it was an interesting experience. And I... I, I loved it. But I also realized, like, oh, my God, I have such respect for actors who do movies for months and months and months with prosthetics because it's not fun. Sitting I mean, through that oh every my day. God. Yeah. yeah. And then how it's itching. And then it was like an emotional scene. So I was kind of crying and so snot would run <laughs> through this fake nose where, like, I couldn't blow. I mean, it was just gross. <laughs> it's like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's great. Are there um, some other roles out there that you maybe would want to try playing? Or like I would, yeah. I mean, I'm open to to a lot of stuff. I I feel like I finally um, look a little bit older because I feel like for a time there, like I was the the young girl, and then I wasn't the 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 roles that I would go in for was like you know a mother of three or like just just playing a regular person, mm -hmm. and I didn't they didn't fit me yet. And now I feel like I have more maturity, so I feel like I can, you know, mm -hmm. that it that it would go over better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what a fun thing in this industry where it's usually about yeah. trying to be younger, yeah. you know, or no, to, to be like now we can embrace no, different I know, roles but it's, and opportunities. It's so funny because I remember going in for like this horror movie. It was like a was it text? It was a like Chainsaw Master or something like, and um and it said that oh I was reading for the the younger sister and I said that she was like just a tomboy, you know. Mm -hmm. So I'm like oh I went in in jeans and a t-shirt and and no makeup, and then I left, and like, yeah, we want to see her back, but, you know, she really wasn't that pretty. Like, could you tell her to, like, you know, and I'm like, oh, my God. So they do want me to come in with, like, a push-up <laughs> bra and, you know, full-on make, you know what yeah, I mean? It was yeah. like, there, you know, I wanted to do it the way that it was, that I read it, you mm -hmm, know? Mm -hmm. And it's just so funny, but it was it's, horror flick, so maybe that's... They still wanted, like, like yeah, yeah, she's not supposed to be, like, but she still needs to, do you know what I mean? So I yeah. learned that, like, okay, even if it's natural, like, you put your mascara on, girl. <laughs> like, you still need to look, like, fresh. Yeah. It's just stupid. <laughs> that's why yeah. it was fun to do that, too, like, nip tuck. Like, I just always enjoy when it's a little bit more rough. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's fun. <laughs> yeah. That's the Tom girl <laughs> attitude. Yeah. I yeah. <laughs> love it. Yeah. Well, you also did some hosting for Sweden's I um, did. Next I did. Top Model. Yeah. How was that? Ugh, I mean, yeah. hosting is, I don't think, is my thing. I tried it, uh, but um, I think it's really hard. I mean, like, I admire, like, for you to, like, just hosting, just being you, but hosting is, like, really, if you're acting, you're not you. You can, mm -hmm. you, you can hide behind something, but when it's like, oh, hi, I'm Minnie Andon, and blah, 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 I was just like, oh, like, I just, I, I don't think I was, I mean, it wasn't terrible, but it wasn't great either. And sometimes it's nice to have the lines laid out there for you, so you just know yeah. you Yeah, and like also those. a show like that is so sorry, but it's so silly because there is some truth to it, but not much. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, okay, now it's your turn, and you have 10 frames to get it done. Like, no, you don't. You don't have 10 <laughs> frames, you know, and you have to do it with a spider on your face. Like, I would not know. I'm not going to do it with a spider. You know what I mean? It's like all these, like, so I had to f tell these girls to do all these silly things that really wasn't... It's a TV show, after all. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not really how it goes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it was. I felt a little. Um, I just felt a little silly, to be honest. <laughs> Any more yeah. of the like producer bug in you, or things no, that you would want to produce? No, I mean that's produce? that. I mean that was uh, maybe in the future, but that was just like a short that we did a million years ago. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, there's there's we're definitely like surrounded by a lot of creative people, so uh, there's always stuff we want to do, but. Um, yeah, I, I, I think I prefer to be, like, hired when it comes to the acting mm -hmm. stuff. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, well, that's so the I fun that one. <laughs> just, you know, just yeah. show up and play yeah. and be, yeah, you know, exactly. be and have a good time. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. exactly. And not be, like, responsible for the whole situation. Yeah. 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 I, I understand that completely. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, we talk a little bit about travel here. So since you're yeah. from Sweden, I mm -hmm. wanted to kind of pick your brain about if somebody was okay. to travel to Sweden or yeah. what your favorite, you know, yeah. places are. Yeah. I mean, Sweden is great. I, I don't think I've ever met anyone who's been there who didn't love it 
Um, definitely, you know, like summertime is my favorite time to go, July or August. Um, and I live, so I'm from Stockholm, which has the most beautiful archipelago. It's like 30,000 islands outside of mm. Stockholm, and it's magical. Um, but we used to always go to the West Coast um, in the summertime because my mom from down there, and she was a teacher, so she would always have like three months off in the summer. So we would go down to the West Coast, and it's the sand beaches, so we would spend our time there. Uh, which is also, you know, gorgeous and kind of like that beach life. Um, mm. But yeah, Sweden has a lot to offer and so much good food and, and people are nice. Everybody speaks English. It's easy, you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's it's they have a good fashion sense. It's a fun place. Mm -hmm. So outside of Sweden, do you have any spots that are your go to places? Um, you you know, what? we don't travel so much. I travel for work, but like we are such homebodies. My husband actually isn't really a homebody, but I've kind of like, I, I guess I'm making one. But like. <laughs> Um, but also because we have like seven dogs yeah. and we got to get like that one dog sitter that they love. Do you know what I mean? Yes. So it's not as easy as it used to be. But um, my absolute like favorite place I ever went was Kenya. Um, we went and stayed at this um, cotter safari and it was just magical. And uh, I would love, love, love to take my, our, our son is six now. I'll wait a couple of years till he's older so he will really remember and mm -hmm. take it all in. But it was such a such an experience mm -hmm. so beautiful well speaking of the dogs i want yeah. to talk about dogs more we have a picture with all your dogs yeah. <laughs> so cute so tell me about you know where your passion for the animals came from so it comes from my mom actually like she's even worse than i am like i will stop like every dog that walks by i have to say hi to and my husband's just like oh like you're like um and my mom is the same and I almost get embarrassed by her sometimes I'm like mom and then I'm like oh my god I'm just the same uh it's ridiculous and now it was so cute because we went to the farmer's market on Sunday me and my son Felix and he um there were so many dogs there and he kept pointing them all out and he was like I want to go say hi and I'm like okay it's, it's passed on it's yeah. passed on and one of the ladies were like do you know how to say hi to a dog do you know you put your hand out I'm like he's got seven like he knows it's fine but yeah I've always loved animals I've I've always had we had a dog growing up and um when I first when I came to New York actually we got our first dog there and uh it was actually from a pet store which is absolutely horrific but I didn't know better at the time um now I'm all into dog adoption and uh, dog rescue in general and have have absolutely would never go and, and buy a dog but they're still there they're, they sit mm -hmm. there and people walk by and um but yeah so that's how it started and then um we've just kept adding and adding and then we've lost a few from old age and and every time you know we lose one I'm like okay well you know what we're not getting any more dogs right now you know and then <laughs> there's like you know I saw this chihuahua like two years ago now she was like 10 or something in the shelter and I was like oh well it, like cause I have follow all the rescue sites and mm -hmm. And I was like, I will just take her home and I, I'll find a home for him. No problem. Of course she stayed, you know. <laughs> so the foster, the, the foster fail is what I call her. Yes. <laughs> I get that one. But so yeah. I'm like, I do want to do more of that in the future, but I need to have a better setup. Yeah. You know, it's uh, if I if they come in like they stay with me in the bed, then, you know, it might be a little tricky. I love the foster fail because when I first moved out here, you know, you're yeah. in apartments and I was like, oh, I, yeah. you know, I can't have a dog, but I tell my mom back yeah. home in Nebraska, I'm like, no, 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 you know, it's fine. I'm just going to go foster yeah. at this place. Like you yeah. can take them out for hikes and then yeah. you bring it back and it's great. Yeah. And she's like, yeah, you know yeah. how that's going to go. Yeah. Like the first time it was this, exactly. you know, be, yeah, by the third time I'm in tears. Like I can't yeah. take him back there. There's yeah. no way. And no, then, no, 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 no. Like, you yeah. have to find him. And you know, I was, I, I tried to find her home and, and I found a great uh, couple and then they took her home and then they kind of changed their minds. Mm. And I kept thinking, okay, Okay, so what if I, because I was like, listen, anything, and you call me. Like, she's coming back to me if you even have, you know. Yeah. And uh, and I thought, oh, what if I, what if I keep like having her place with people, and then they keep changing their minds? Like, then she's gonna get completely messed yeah. up. So I couldn't do that to her. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's uh, I have to have a better uh, setup. And when we have, you know, we're dreaming of uh, farm life. So nice. when that happens, which hopefully will be soon, mm -hmm. then I'll have a, a, you know, I'll do my foster barns and. Yeah, really go for it. Are there any particular rescues that you uh, that you work with? Well, I, I really love uh, Deity um, and uh, Ellen, who who um, is the girl there that I know is is amazing, and they they go to the shelters and pull dogs out and. Um, you know, fosters them and, and vets them and then finds them homes. And I think uh, actually that's a great thing because 
I feel like for for anyone who wants to get a dog, you know, it's very intimidating to walk into a shelter. And the dogs are also not showing themselves the best mm-hmm. way in a shelter because the environment is horrible. Mm-hmm. Like they're sitting on cement floors with bars. Like who would be, you yeah. know, they might be barking. A big dog Scared. might be barking. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it, it looks like it's aggressive. It's not, but it's terrified. Mm-hmm. So them taking these dogs out and, and then kind of, you know, showing them in a calm environment is so, so great. Mm-hmm. And then people can come in and they can really find a good fit. Because a lot of people, too, I mean, that's the problems with, like, you know, pet stores and, and people are like, oh, my God, it's so cute. I'm going to get this dog. And you're like, oh, no, that's a husky. You know, you don't want a husky. You, yeah. you're, you, that's, I mean, you might, but then you need to have that lifestyle. Yeah. Yeah. People don't know which no. breeds match their, their lifestyle. No. Yeah. Um, so I think it's really great. And then they can kind of, you know, find the perfect family for that dog. Because mm-hmm. um, it's, <clears throat> I mean, of course, like, you, you fall in love with what a dog looks like, but, you know that's only so much mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. you need to find a dog that really fits your life yeah for sure for you um, and the dog to make yeah it and I, I mean I love it now every time I mean all, all our friends have dogs now and like I said to you I'm like oh whenever you're ready for another dog like <laughs> I I'm just like I'm constantly like scrolling through all the rescue sites and I'm just like finding mm-hmm. dogs for people and like that's sending great. them and you know a lot of the times it doesn't work but my neighbors right across the street they went and they got one of the dogs to send them and it was like probably the like 15th dog I sent I was like oh, I can't keep doing that she kept saying it's not the right time it's not the right time and I was like I have to send this dog there's something about this dog and, <laughs> and I sent it and we were in Sweden at the time and we came back and she's like guess what we did when you were gone <laughs> and she's the sweetest dog and she's like Aww. she just fits right in. I mean it's so great yeah it and it's you like feel so good but it, yeah it's like the one thing but like that's one thing that I can be proud of anyway. yeah you know like I did I did one good thing yeah you saved, you saved a life yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah and it's fun watching them change and grow too so once amazing. they get out once they feel the love how yeah. their personality yeah. is just really yeah just and grow. also like how it just completes a family in general mm-hmm. I think mm-hmm. like I said before it's like it's a house or it's a home a home has a, an animal like a pet a dog a cat whatever you want but mm-hmm. I think it's great and I think it's you know if you're not allergic and have other problems and no time because <laughs> you really shouldn't get a dog if you you can't care for it but if you can care for it I think it's just such a great environment for for your kids to grow up in, yeah you know and yeah. uh, for our son especially because he's an only child and uh you know he's used to getting the attention but he still has to share it with six dogs yeah. uh, seven dogs now and and a lot of them three of them now are really old so they need a lot of special attention and it's like no Felix you gotta help you know I gotta do I gotta specially feed Gus now and I gotta do this mm-hmm. and it's like you know mm-hmm. It's kind of good. Plus, I think it also gives them, you know, responsibility and also sure. how to take care of things yep. and see compassion. I mean, I remember yep. my dog being like my best friend, yeah. you know, growing up, do it, tell yeah. all the secrets too. So probably yeah. him being an only child too, having oh, yeah. that, that companionship. Yeah, even like that, you know, and it's like, you don't have to be scary buddies in bed with you. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, it's just, it's really sweet. I, I love seeing him and his love for animals. And that's, you know, um, that's also why, you know, he, he doesn't eat meat. <laughs> my, my, my husband eats meat. I'm a, I'm a vegan now. And uh, my son is, uh, he, he's a pescatarian, he eats fish. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I, and today he said, um, um, Mom, I, I, I said, why don't you eat, you know, why don't you eat cheese anymore? Why don't you do milk? And I was like, because I, I just really felt like a hypocrite doing it. Like, I really don't want to. I, I just, you know, the cows are not happy. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever people say, they're not. And it's not natural. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to do it. And he's like, I mean, he still eats cheese, right? So he's like, but I, and I'm like, yeah, I know. But I wasn't, I didn't have enough um, knowledge when, you know, and I was worried that he was going to lack something. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. I, I was like, okay. But now I was like, well, I'm hoping you'll be ready, you know, soon. And we can slightly move over to it. And mm-hmm. as, as, you know, I'm getting more and more educated about it. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and if he chooses to eat meat when he's older, he can. But I felt like it was so weird to me, this whole thing of, like, him loving animals so much and then me not being honest about, like, where it comes from. Yeah. Listen, if you know, if you choose to eat meat, like, I, everybody does their own thing. Like, that's fine. But I, I feel like it's such a taboo thing. Like, you can't tell kids, like, you know, I mean, they should make, like, an animated movie about, like, a milk cow who gets her calf ripped away from her. Mm-hmm. But we can't talk about that. But we could see Dumbo at the circus. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But it's like, it happens. Yeah. But that's, no. No, no, no. It's like, mm-hmm. oh, my God, you're mm-hmm. so, don't, don't, don't talk about it. Don't talk what's in the hot. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And it's weird to me because we're, we're so, like, aware of things nowadays. Yeah. Or but then the, the, yeah, but then there's still so much that's just like, nope. Mm-hmm. Mm-mm. Don't talk about that. That's And, and it, it yeah. felt weird to me to to do that to him and 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 literally people are like what are you going to do when he says he wants to eat meat i'm like well if he's old enough i'm going to show him videos of, of what happens in the slaughterhouse and then if he still wants to eat meat then he can do that you know <laughs> so yeah, yeah. maybe it's a little harsh aware. but i don't know 
I'm, I'm trying, you know. No, yeah, no, I think it's great to make them aware of ever, you know, yeah. everything. Just yeah. Experience. Juice. Yeah. All right. Well, let's see. We have some time left, so I'm going to do real quickly here a little Tom Girl quiz to okay. find out okay. quick, they're quick, rapid fire questions just to find out what type of Tom Girl that you are. Okay. So easy cool. questions, but okay. okay. So would you choose cold beer or a spicy margarita? A spicy margarita. Okay. City or the country? Country. Your favorite adventure? Uh, ooh, a favorite adventure. Probably like, oh my god, I'm not so adventurous. I think, um, maybe back. Trip. Yeah, maybe backpacking. Mm -hmm. uh, but I need to be able to stay in, in a cabin every night. Maybe some glamping yeah. somewhere. Yeah. yeah, it's not so tomboyish, is it? I just know <laughs> no, myself by now. <laughs> yeah, no, it's good. You know. It still is. <laughs> um, any mottos or words to live by? Um, hmm, I should probably know something, right? Um, That's kind of a tough one because I don't know what I would say with that. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Like, basically, I think like it, it pays off just being yourself because if people don't like you, they're still going to find out who you are later mm -hmm. on. So just like be yourself from the start, mm -hmm. okay. you know? And uh, the last thing that you did that scared you? Oh, uh, that scared me. Well, so I it, going on small airplanes. I don't like it, and I do it. There's like, yeah, yeah. Mm -mm. <laughs> don't like it. Uh, then and the number one thing left on your luck at bit on your bucket list. I have too. so many more things left, but I do want to go. <laughs> one of the things that I do want to do is actually in Nairobi. I want to go stay at the Giraffe mm. Hotel. Yeah. So. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> All right. So lastly, is there anything, any advice you would give for people who are, you know, maybe young girls out there or, or men dreaming of wanting to be, you know, a fashion model, get into yeah. the modeling industry? Um, I mean, my my way into it wasn't so traditional. It just kind of like hand it happened and I started doing it. Um, and if you, I mean, if you want to pursue it, of course, like you can go to reputable agency and, and, uh, and, and, you know, do some test shots. Just make sure you go to people that actually are uh, not just stealing your money, but people that actually know what they're doing. And if it doesn't work out, like, there's so much other stuff to do. It's just people put a lot. It's a tricky one. It's, it's, yeah. it, I don't know how to, to put words on it, but mm -hmm. um, I just don't think that, like, as a young girl, a young man's like, oh, I want to be a model. It's like, okay, well, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. what is it that you want from it then? Mm -hmm. Is it really, like, modeling or is it the fame? Like, what is it that you want from it, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, and like I said, I've been lucky enough to have a career that, that has lasted and I've been surrounded by great people, but it can also go another way. Yeah. And also probably because you did have that other balance right. and the other th parts of your life right. going on that you were interested in. Yeah. 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 Ah, well, wonderful. Um, anything coming up or any campaigns where we can see you in soon um, or where people can find you? Well, mm -hmm. um, yes. Well, right now, the, I saw that you have that, like, uh, the, the Italian L that's out now mm -hmm. with all the doggies. Yeah. yeah. Can we just put that yes. one back up? That's sweet. You that's, guys want to talk about the, uh, the L magazine cover with the yeah. dog with the blue and eyes. And then we actually also did um, a Vogue Living. Yeah, that that yeah. one. Yeah. yeah. That's open. That's out now. But then there's also a Vogue Living um, Netherlands. Actually, it's coming out in June with, uh, with my house because my husband's really uh, interested and so am I in, in architecture and designing and stuff. So we did a little home story, Love which it. was really fun. So that's coming out. And then, um, yeah, this. What's your home style? Is this it... house that we have now is quite Swedish, actually. It's very, it's, uh, everything is white and like white wood floors and, and it's built in 1939. Um, but it's also very cozy, like a lot of ethnic rugs and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But it's, yeah, we call it the White House. So it's like, <laughs> okay, come to, but it's, it's a, you know, yeah. Yeah. The White House. Place. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for coming in today. It was yeah. an absolute treat to get to talk to you. Thank I just you think so much. You're so beautiful fun being inside thank and you. out. So thank it was so much you. fun. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks. All right, guys, that wraps up another week. We will see you here again next week. Have a great one. All right. Founder Kevin Undergaro and me, Maria Menunos, would like to thank you for tuning in to AfterBuzz TV. Remember, we're not just the first, we're the biggest in the world, and we're the only destination for all your favorite TV shows. Whatever you crave, we've got it. So go to AfterBuzzTV.com and check out our lineup. Buzz you later. <laughs> the views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.